All right, Ben, as requested, here's some pictures of the rear setup. Jay, will you talk us through it, what we're sure. looking at? Um, what we're looking at right here is we're looking at a high travel setup. Excuse my cookie. We're looking at a high travel setup for a solid axle in the rear of the Rally Fighter. The Rally Fighter, like many desert racing trucks or professional desert racing vehicles, is set up to run a fixed rear end and a floating front end or an independent front suspension. And the way you need to control the motion of the rear axle is by making sure that you have components that hold it in the middle and up and down and keep it in moving the way you want. So right here, we're looking at those components that hold it in the middle. This is called a Watts link and it's sort of like a variation of a panhard bar, and it's sort of the fifth link, or the fifth and sixth links that hold a uh, rear end together. And so what you can see here is we have the differential, which is in the middle of the solid axle. It's a Ford 8.8. .8. It's a Ford 8.8, .8, which means the size of the ring gear that goes around the pinion. And uh, then up here, if you can see where I'm holding on, this is the rear upper control arm. It's actually two control arms, but they come together at a joint in the middle that by physics definition must be on the same axis of the Watts link. So this is sort of the upper control arm, if you will. And then the lower control arms are down here. They run forward from the axle and they are the rear lower control arms. And you can see those on both sides. And so basically what you have here is the whole setup that keeps the rear end engaged and on the ground. The upper control arm keeps the axle from rotating as you apply power to it. The Watts link keeps the axle in the middle from side to side as it moves through its travel. And the lower control arms keep the axle from basically moving forward or back on either side from yawing around the axle. And we're getting a lot of comments on these shocks, so can you describe these for us too? So these shocks are an amazing evolution of shock technology. If you go back about 10 years or 15 years, uh, people that ran in races such as the Rally Fighter is set up to run would get to a shock stop and they would pull out the top rings and dump four sets of red hot shocks on the ground. Now you can run a full thousand mile race with these shocks and then continue to drive them. This is what's called an internal bypass external reservoir coil over a 2.5 inch shock made by Fox Suspension. And what that is really is inside this tube, there is a place, there are several valves for fluid to bypass. And as the shock moves up through its travel, it cuts off those bypasses, leaving less space for the fluid to leave, which means it gets stiffer and stiffer as it gets toward the top. This is an external reservoir which is filled with both air and fluid. And as it flows through those bypass valves, it gets pushed into this reservoir and vice versa when it comes back down. And then these are the springs that are of different tensions that allows the shock to be able to be pressed back down when it is uh, um, released from being compressed. There are I-box springs. And, and these are I-box springs. And yes, Fox shocks. Three of them, in fact, on each shock tower. All right, cool. Thank you. Hey, no worries.